makes a, a reference of it, that's how they draw it. That's how it's commonly well known, is reality being shattered. So, I mean, th that itself, that's a feat itself. I mean, even if we don't want to take consideration of what the editor said, like how you said, Chris, World Forger even said that his multiverse was destroyed. That was his masterpiece. Which is like plain evidence in, in their face, but yeah, they still try to ignore it. Like, it's ridiculous. But, you know, we're never going to bow to Dragon Ball fans. We never will. <laughs> That's just not who we are. Yeah, yeah. It, it's There's a lot of evidence that already built up. Like how you said, I mean, we don't deny the fact that, yes, he was amped. You know, and, and let's, ta let's talk about the amp state because people say, oh, well, he was amped. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's observe what happened because... We don't know how many suns Superman went to, okay? We know for a fact that True. it wasn't infinite suns, right? Yeah, definitely let, was let, not infinite let's suns. Assume, <laughs> let's assume that every single sun dip is a million times the multiplier. And let's assume Superman went a million suns, right? I'm over-exaggerating this. That does not equal three-dimensional. Does not e does not equal infinite 3D or even infinite 4D. Um, it doesn't equal that. There's still a gap of power between it. So, in the comic book itself, in the context, we know for a fact that it was Hope that was able to complete that feat. It was Hope in the very end because, I mean, you could just see it all throughout the illustration that Superman flying, you have his son and his father, symbols of Hope to him. That he was able to complete it, that he was able to continue the feat and was able to uh, knock down World Forger. That's the observation. Now, now, Chris, now let's talk about at the very end what happened. Basically, when Superman completely knocked down the World Forger and blackened his eye. And remember, uh, as I said earlier, World Forger was literally taking universal blasts from his hammer in his face. He told the rest of Justice League to stand back. And he was literally just not phased by it at all. But yeah, you know, Superman flying in him at high speeds, like literally one shot at him, knocking him to the ground and blacking in one of his eyes. That's a pretty damn impressive feat. So even if you still want to try to lowball the thief to not being at least multiversal, you have to at least say it's at least multi universals for the simple fact that Superman knocked him on his ass with little to no difficulty. Yes. And consider this, because this is my argument. Uh, now, not everybody is gonna um, agree with it, but I believe that KOing World Forger, a six dimensional being, is a greater feat than destroying very many multiple multiverses. And that's hyperversal, like really strong levels. I mean, even in uh, issue, I believe, issue Justice League issue 22, it talks about World Forger, the Anti Monitor, and the Monitor were beings created from parts of the overboard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people would argue that this is some outerversal level of being. Outerversal. Now, I'm not gonna agree or disagree. Everybody makes their own arguments. But for the fact that Superman was able to KO a six dimensional being, that itself is greater than a multiversal feat. That's me. I don't know, Chris, if you have any say on that. Well, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, like, look, even if you look at the anti monitor, you look at constantly, look at, um, what's it called? What's it called before? Guidebooks. They, they're constantly saying that, you know, anti monitor work, uh, anti monitor in the new 52 was at least not omnipotent. Um, you can even, like, say he's even multiversal. Um, stuff, so stuff like that, like, you can really put these guys in a high tier. Yeah, so it's just, like, he's literally in, World Forger is literally the opposite of, of Anti-Monitor. Anti-Monitor is destroyer of worlds, aka universes, multiverses, etc., etc. And World Forger is the creator of worlds, universes, etc., etc. So he's literally the opposite of, they're literally the opposite of each other, in a sense, and like, come on, it's, it's, it's pretty yeah. obvious, it's pretty obvious. You yeah, know. I, and I, I know that, um, and the story goes when the, the anti-monitor and the monitor were having beef with each other, right? On issue 22, you got monitor walking 
in the multiverse itself, right? You got infinite universes at the time. This is way before, this is the very beginning of it, where there used to be infinite universes. And you got Monitor mm -hmm. walking in there through the source wall. How? I don't know. He just walks through there, right? You got Anti Monitor outside of that. And then World Forger went back to his forge. Now, people will argue that the reason why Superman was able to complete this feat is because physics was going haywire. Nothing was making sense. But little do they know that World Forger did not go inside that Justice League uh, multiverse. We know for a fact that he stayed behind. He stayed in this uh, Forger. He was creating his own because he knew something was coming up. Uh, Doom, the judges, right? Mm -hmm. the cosmic judges were going to... Yeah, basically, they were going to you know destroy like that universe because that's why the point of him you know, um, trying to replace the universe so that Justice won't see it and won't see anything wrong with that multiverse. So yeah, basically the judges were going to, you know, judge that multiverse and take it out of existence, I believe. Yeah. And, and he was trying to save them. And that's yeah. why he called World War to call Superman the greatest villain of the, in existence. You know, he really doomed us because he knows that the judges are coming. Yeah. And, and I mean, this is a very epic proportion of uh, the comic. So I might have to do another video explaining uh, a little bit more of the monitors and everything, but I don't know. Uh, that's yeah, we is. yeah we also could go over um, Lex Luthor as well because he's extremely powerful right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, just to recap on the feats, guys. I know we briefly talked a little bit about it, but I know there's a lot of information that we'd love to share about it. But you know, briefly going over uh, from the very beginning of the of the comic, we just went chronological order. One Superman flying. Uh, beyond speeds of imagination, two shaking dimensions, three destroying the multiverse, and four literally KOing the world forger. Like m most of those feats are just six dimensional levels. So this <laughs> like, is just it, 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 was, it was crazy. Yeah, I mean, when I saw this feat, I was just like, this literally flips the debate between a Goku and Superman. This yeah. thing, like, like I mean, it, and it all, and it only makes it even better, depending what happens on the next on the Manhattan. Oh, oh yeah, guys, don't yeah, because unfortunately we gotta wait all the way in, you know, to December, and and trust me, you know us guys, we will be talking about that when it does happen. Yeah, when but that, yeah, when that comic happens, and we see some crazy feats in that thing, you will see us making a video, guys. <laughs> Look Best forward to that. that. So right now, I mean, this is Superman in Justice League 25, a very enjoyable series. Next videos, I'm gonna continue on mid feats. I know I have been lagging it, but thankfully I got this. I wanted to make this video for a while, but thankfully we got this out of the way. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna continue on mid feats, and then I'm gonna move on from there to higher the universal level of new 52 Superman feats. So. Stay tuned, guys. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for coming over and discussing about this uh, Justice League 25, man. Appreciate it, man. But one last thing before I go, guys. Um, don't sleep on New 52, man. I, I've Dave done his research on them. I've done my research on them. Like, he has so many good feats. He's really a lot stronger than people think he is. New 52 is definitely a heavy hitter. Yeah. Oh, and... Lastly, guys, before I finish this, um, I've decided to create a webcomic of Goku versus Superman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm creating oh, yeah. that webcomic, and uh, I have someone writing it down. I'm the one doing the artwork and everything, so it's going to be a webcomic building up to the fight, and the fight itself, it's going to be an animated fight, so it's not really going to be a comic book. It's going to be animated. Just like how he did with Kid Boo vs Superman, it's gonna be a little bit better though. I know I got a lot of things to improve, and I take and I've taken notes. So look forward to that, guys. Uh, please support me on this on Patreon. Um, the more I get support from you guys, uh, whether the, don't matter the don't, uh, donations, but whatever I receive, the more you guys give, the more faster I could be able to uh, able to complete this task. So. It's going to be a while until the fight comes, but it is uh, a comic book with a plot in it. So I hope everybody's excited for it. I'm very excited for it. I'm going to pour out my heart making this uh, webcomic. So, yeah, it's, it's going to blow you guys' minds away. 
trust me. So but, guys, yeah, thanks, it's really thanks good. again so much for everything, Chris. Guys, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Any last words, mm -hmm. Chris? Um, just remember, Superman is better than Goku. <laughs> <laughs> see, <laughs> see you guys later. All right, guys. Okay, thank you guys for uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time.